I'm Carla Hinton with the Oklahoman and NewsOK.com. I'm here in the studio today with Kenyatta D. Berry, author, attorney, and co-host of the Genealogy Roadshow on PBS. She will be a guest speaker at the Oklahoma Genealogical Society's annual spring seminar set for Saturday, March 9th at the Oklahoma History Center. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I think I'm fascinated by what we're about to talk about, so, so I have to say that. <laughs> Well, my first question for you, how did you become involved in genealogy? You began your geneal genealogical journey while in law school, and mm -hmm. most people will find that fascinating. I'm one of them. Yeah, so I actually started in law school because I was studying contracts and torts law. And I was at the Library of Michigan, and I kind of was tired of studying, so I thought I'd take a break. And at the time, uh -huh. my ex-boyfriend, his family, they were prominent African Americans in Augusta and Atlanta. Okay. And they had a very unusual surname of Dewelly. Now what's different is most people start with their own families. I did not start my genealogy okay. journey with my own family. Okay. So starting with his family, I was able to find a lot of information about, I believe, his second great aunt who was a doctor in Atlanta. Okay. And because of the information I found, both historical records, um, biographical information, I just became hooked and fascinated by her story and the mm. story of his second great grandfather who was enslaved. Mm -hmm. So that really led me down the journey of discovering genealogy. Okay, okay, really. Wow, that's fascinating because I was going to, I thought that you were going to say, yeah, I started with my family. Yeah, right. Most so, people yeah. do. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm unique in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but it was interesting, I think, starting with uh, his name is George, George's family, the Dewellies, was great because with an unusual surname, I was able to find a lot of information about his second great grandfather and his father, okay. so his third great grandfather, who actually was his master and his mm -hmm. father. Interesting. Yeah, so I was able to find that out in the first kind of couple of months of doing research, which is very really? difficult and challenging for African Americans and unusual. Okay, okay, because of the last name. Because of the last name. Interesting. Yeah, okay. and other documents, wills and probate records as well. Okay, interesting, interesting. So how did you come to be part of the Genealogy Roadshow? So part of Genealogy Roadshow, um, I started, I live in Santa Monica, and at the time I was president of the Association of Professional Genealogists. Okay. And the organization's international and really focused on helping individuals kind of establish their genealogy business. Mm -hmm. Talk about accounting, setting up your business, marketing, all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And I went to go meet with a couple of folks from the production company in uh, Sherman Oaks in the Valley. And I was going just as a president to mm -hmm. get my members jobs on this new TV show. Mm -hmm. What I did not realize at the time is the two individuals I was meeting with were from casting. Oh, okay. So they start talking to me and understood and saw my passion for genealogy and convinced me <laughs> to actually audition for the show. Okay. Because at the time I was working full time selling software. So I had no interest really in being on TV. Right. Um, but it's something that I love doing and since it's my passion I auditioned via Skype. Um, didn't think anything of it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, months later, they said PBS loves you, and then here I am. Okay. Wow. What a story. Yeah. Okay. Well, what what, what is your favorite part of uh, doing the show? What's your favorite aspect of doing the show? My favorite aspect is storytelling. Okay. So watching people change before my eyes. One of the things, just in the conversation we're having today, mm -hmm. we're sitting. You're sitting across from someone, and you're telling them about their family history, but you want them to be engaged, right? right. And you also have to present a story that is compelling to viewers. Mm -hmm. So what I love is being able to teach people how to do their genealogy as viewers, watching me tell someone their story, okay. but also watching that guest kind of change. You know, people come on the show with a question, mm -hmm. and they think they're going to get this answer and then they get another answer mm -hmm. and it completely changes their identity, um, their focus, and if they've been doing research it opens up a lot of times a whole new branch of their family. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. So you frequently give lectures about African American genealogy, mm -hmm. a slave ancestral research, land records, and DNA. Why do you like to hone in on those particular topics? Um, one of the reasons, so I chose slave ancestor research, which kind of encompasses all those things, okay. land records, deeds, DNA, um, it, because it's the most challenging. Okay. So being in law school, when I started to do the Dwelly family and I found the last enslaver who was his father, which is critical for African American research, is right. to find the last enslaver. Um, so when I did that, I thought, okay, this is what, you know, I want to help people find their people. And for African Americans, this is the greatest myth that they can't find their genealogy or their ancestors because they weren't enslaved, mm -hmm. which is not true. So I wanted to battle that myth. Okay. The other part of it is being a lawyer. As a lawyer, I'm taught to remove emotion from situations. So I'm able to look at documentation where you have enslaved people listed with a value attached to them. 
which can be very emotional and traumatizing for people. Right. But I'm able to remove myself from the situation and move through the work to help people find their people. So that's really why I chose enslaved genealogy and then all of those other kind of aspects, especially with DNA, comes into play when doing that research. I guess I never thought about that. That would be, uh, and I've never dealt with it, so mm -hmm. I'm, I can see where that might be uh, difficult and maybe a little problematic. It is. It is for a lot of people. And, you know, even as for me, I've been doing it for so long, for over 20 years, sometimes I even have to step back and say to people, it's not that I don't have emotion, right? right. It's not that I'm not right. impacted by this, sure. but I've been doing it for so long, right. and I have learned how to remove that part or separate that part so I can move forward and process and help people kind of find their people and explain the historical context as well because I think it's important when you're doing genealogy, African American genealogy sure. in general is understand historical context around the situation your ancestors lived in. Right. Okay, okay, interesting. Okay, so that's a great segue. If, can you tell us about your book? Oh, sure. So yeah. my book, I hold it up here. It's okay. the Family Tree Toolkit. Okay. Um, it came out in November. And so the Family Tree Toolkit was actually written to help people um, kind of start their, their, their journey, right? So a lot of times we see in genealogy the growth of DNA. It's exploded over the past couple years. Okay. So you take a DNA test, now what? Right? You get right. these fancy charts, but you don't understand how that really gets you to the documentation and to your ancestors. Mm -hmm. The Family Tree Toolkit can help you get there. Okay. So I wrote it to help you kind of tell my family story. Okay. And I start with my family. I do talk about the Dewellies, but I actually oh, yeah. start with my family okay. in the book, sort of how I uncover them. Mm -hmm. How to interview family members, just have a conversation like we're having. Right. Uh, really talk about documents, so U.S. records research, okay. uh, census records, vital records, all those kind of core things that are foundation for genealogy. Okay. Then moving into to uh, military records. My biggest chapter is immigration and naturalization. Spent a lot of time on that. Okay. Um, I spent a lot of time on actually Confederate pension records as well, because I think those are important okay. um, as part of the research process. And then obviously African American, uh, Native American, European research, uh, Jewish DNA and adoption. So it's kind of a comprehensive guide, kind of soup to nuts to help anyone kind of start their family history. Mm -hmm. And for those who've been doing research for a while, mm -hmm. but are not as familiar with other areas or other record sets, this is a great starting point for them. Okay. How long did it take you to put this book together? Uh, well, <laughs> good question. So it probably took a, between six to eight months giving edits and everything like oh that, but gosh. I wrote it in. The, the publishing company is one of those companies that publishes very quickly. They're based out wow. of New York. Okay. So they're not a genealogical publishing company. Mm -hmm. And so they really were about getting the book out quickly. So I okay. wrote the book um, while I was working full time wow. selling software and turned okay. it in at 2 15 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> so, okay. I was thinking you were going to say maybe three of those things. There's a lot in that book. Yes, there's yeah. a lot. And I did a, what I did to kind of prepare for it because it was a clean slate is I looked at all the other books that have been written uh, over the past 20 years I've been doing genealogy and I really kind of said what would I have wanted when I started you know in 1996 whenever I started doing genealogy to help me kind of understand the process. Okay. And the book is meant to just kind of give you enough snippets mm -hmm. but it's not meant to be a, guide, a comprehensive guide on military or immigration or African American, but just gets you a starting point. And then I include a lot of resources on each of those areas to help you dig a little bit deeper if you need to. Okay, okay, good. Well, I wasn't going to ask you this, but I, we may have time for this one final question. Sure. What do you hope to talk about at the spring seminar? So at the spring seminar, a couple of things I'm um, hoping to talk about. One is obviously African American research, right? Helping people understand how to do that, how to find their enslaved ancestors, understanding the challenges associated with that. Mm -hmm. Talk a lot about DNA. Okay. Um, DNA, again, is the largest segment of genealogy a lot. It's the most growing segment of it. It's a piece of genealogy. It's not doing your genealogy, as people say. Right. So I really want to kind of talk about what it means to take a DNA test, why you would do it, mm -hmm. um, sort of the differences between various companies, mm -hmm. and the privacy and legal implications of doing DNA as well. Mm -hmm. And then focus on family reunion planning. So you've started doing your research. Mm -hmm. You've done some African-American research. You've done other research. You've done your DNA. What are you going to do with all that information? Right. So planning a family union, sharing family stories, how you do that. And then kind of wrapping it up in a nice little bow, talking about some of my favorite stories from Genealogy Roadshow to the point of what happens to people when they learn things and kind of behind the scenes as well. Okay, good, good. The DNA I have learned from other people can be surprising too. Oh yes, there DNA is always surprising. There are a lot of surprises. <laughs> you have to be ready. I always tell people when they're doing genealogy, mm -hmm. even if you're not doing DNA, you never know what you're going to find. Right. 
And with DNA, it is very surprising. There are uh, a number of non-parental events that might occur that people right. don't know about. <laughs> so. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you for having me. I, I, I think it. that the seminar, it sounds like it's going to be great. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is Carla Hinton reporting for The Oklahoman and NewsOK.com. For more information about Saturday's seminar, go to OKGENSOC.org and read more in The Oklahoman and NewsOK.